All right, how y'all doing? That's a really slow answer on a Friday night. Y'all smell fish? I smell fish. I think some of y'all just came off the river or something. Maybe you're smelling like fish somewhere in here. Um, but that's all right. It's Friday night. You're here. Come on. How y'all doing? That's better. Love it, love it, love it. Hey, listen, I, I just want to say Pastor Andy's been great getting to know you. Uh, I didn't get to meet you last year. I met your wife, wonderful. Um, and uh, just, I'm so excited about the future of Sold Out in the Church of God. I really am. I'm excited about what God's going to do. I'm excited about what's going to happen around here. I'm excited about seeing those things come to pass and fruition that God has for this place. And uh, we're so grateful and thankful, really. Uh, I want to say thank you to the staff and all those who served, and not just at camp, not just on the, everyone who served. Don't forget the children's ministers all week long, during the day, during the night. Um, it's amazing to think, y'all don't know what it takes to put a conference on, let alone a full week of a conference. And I just thank you, and I applaud all of you who have served and, and served well, and those who've come over the Kenai Church. Just great to know you guys, uh, Brandon and Tanya, and, and of course those munchkins of yours, and from the biggest to the smallest. And, and uh, just fantastic what God's going to do in this area, in this region. And, uh, of course, just the sold out in the Church of God in general. You're my family. I love you. And uh, my wife and I, I think the world of you. Uh, I was told to apologize for, for, to my wife uh, from Dave because he didn't know who she was tonight. <laughs> she, he, she thought he was one of the 23-year-old girls back there. I said, well, that's a compliment. So I'm not going to apologize. I'm going to say, hey, Dave thinks that you're 23 years old. And, and, uh, but, but sold out in the Church of God, we love you. We really do. And, of course, uh, my wife. She hasn't said anything all week, and she would kill me if I had her come up now probably. But uh, she, you've heard from her, you've talked to her, you know she's the best part of who we are, and we just love y'all. Thank you once again for opening your pulpit, opening your hearts, receiving us, and being our family extended here in Soldotna. Amen? Come on. Yeah. All right, let's talk for a little while. Can we talk just a bit longer? We're going to talk again about some type of connection. Can we do that? Uh, I'm really excited about this subject tonight because it really is one of the biggest keys. I love the song we ended on tonight because the one thing my daddy taught me was how, how easy it is to go to church, and then and going to church taught me how difficult, how difficult it is if you're not careful to submit. Everyone say submit. But the lineage of my family was I tell everyone everywhere I go that I had a drug problem as a kid. My dad drugged me to church. And, and, and it really did. It stuck with me. When I was at my worst and my lowest and my darkest times, it was the church and my church life that would come back and the words that were spoken and the things that were given to my heart that really kept me going throughout my hardest and my darkest times. And now we're passing those down to our kids and their children, and we're teaching them the importance of submitting. I'm telling you right now, I know the word submission is tough, I know the word submission sometimes is um, overlooked and people, people just get aggravated when you start talking about it. So I can't think of any better way to leave you but aggravated this week as I leave here. <laughs> and, and, and because we're going to talk about connection through submission. Amen? Everyone say connection through submission. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16, we've been here all week long. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Everyone say healthy. healthy. Y'all know healthy things grow. I never had to help my children grow. I just fed them, kept them healthy, and they grew. So healthy things grow. Healthy, growing, full of love. It's the love of God that makes it healthy. And it's the love of God that brings the growth. When we love each other and we're submitted to him, we cannot help but grow if we're doing it the right way. Now, how many wants to go a little bit deeper tonight? Come on, how many how many's ready to go deeper? All right. You, you really mean that? You sure? You're sure about that? Okay. So let's continue on because that's not the end of it. Let's go on down to verse 17 and 18. Uh, with the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, meaning the world, for they are hopelessly confused. Have you noticed, if you look around today, how many people in America and the world are hopelessly confused? Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life that God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. Now, how could people close their minds, those who once knew God, those who once had the revelation of God, close their minds and harden their hearts? Well, let's skip further down, verse 23, 24, and let's read this. 
Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts. Everybody, everyone say my thoughts. Everyone say my attitude. How often do you give yourself attitude adjustment? See, I start every morning out giving myself an attitude adjustment. I read an article the other day, and the statistic in the, argu in the article was that the average pastor only prays 15 minutes a day in America. 15 minutes, that's the average pastor prayer life. Can I tell you, it takes me an hour just to get my own personal attitude adjustment, <laughs> to get myself right, to have a conversation with God, because I'm not a good person if I don't give myself an attitude adjustment. And I don't come to God with some type of prayer formula. I don't have some type of a prayer language that I say to God. I usually just wake up when I'm in a bad mood. I say, God, I'm in a bad way today. If you don't show up, I may punch throat someone, you know, throat punch someone. So I need you. Everyone say, I need you. Look at someone and say, you need Jesus. We all do, right? And that's the attitude adjustment. If we don't have an attitude adjustment, the attitude gets bad, we begin to close our eyes and harden our hearts, and we begin to lose our way, and just a few degrees off every day, we miss the target by miles because we are off our path. Can you say amen? amen. Look, instead, uh, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Everyone say, put it on. Now, the last part of the chapter deals with the attitude area. Let's pick it up, verses 31 through 32. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Now, we know that the Bible talks about the works of the flesh. We know it talks about sexual behavior. We know it talks about adultery. We know it talks about stealing. We know it talk but what about when it comes down to our attitude? What about when it comes down to bitterness? What about when it comes down to rage and anger? What about when it comes down to harsh words? What about when it comes down to slander or gossip in the church? You'll find that he fits in the same category as stealing, adultery, fornication, any other sin, any other missing the mark. He adds these in because it deals with our, come on, everyone say it, attitude. And it begins to close our eyes and begins to harden our heart against God. The goal for me is to live here. See, for me to live here. Look at this. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So my goal is to live here. Not to just tap into it every now and then. I don't want to just be forgiving. I want to walk in the spirit of forgiveness. For instance, I know you're capable of failing me. I'm certainly capable of failing you. My wife will fail me again. I'll fail her again. My children, various ones, our church will fail me. I'll fail them. I've already forgiven them. I don't have to pray for forgiveness. I'm going to walk in the spirit of forgiveness. Amen? To be, to be forewarned is to be forearmed, right? I know you're going to fail. I know they're going to fail. I know I'm going to fail. So I know I'm going to be able to walk in the spirit of forgiveness so I can also walk in the spirit of kindness. I can walk also in the spirit of being loving. I can also walk in everything that God has said I can put on every day. Come on, ever say, put it on. In other words, these should become eventually qualities of our redeemed lives. These should become the quality of people we are in the church here in Sadat and every church and whatever church we attend. How many enjoy being in control of somebody over your life? Anyone ever find an area where you enjoy being in control? See, every hand should be going up because we're all, to some degree, a control freak. I was going to do a series one time on control, so I bought a book called The Control Freak by Les Parrott, and by the second chapter, I said, I can't teach this. My God, I'm a control freak. I better learn how to live it before I preach it because I found out I was in trouble. Amen? Come on, we have to admit it. Uh, you, you might not want to raise your hand. Just reach over and raise someone else's hand. Do that just so you're participating. <laughs> Everyone's got their thing. My wife has a thing about the exterior of her car being so clean all the time. So we try to keep it clean. We try to wash it. But here's the thing. She's like a Pharisee. The outside's clean, but the inside's kind of messed up. <laughs> just kind of cluttered inside and she says well I have grandbabies I'm like so do I they're mine too they ride in my truck you let them clear my you know <laughs> clutter my stuff I have to clean now now we all have our stuff I have my irony right we had to learn in in our marriage 
I don't want my wife ironing my clothes. In fact, I iron her clothes because I'm kind of a control freak on ironing. I iron my clothes all the time. I even argued, I even iron the part of the shirt I tuck in. She says, why are you ironing that? I said, don't bother me, I'm ironing. <laughs> She'll tell you it's true. And maybe you don't care about cars or maybe you don't care about ironing. Maybe it's something else. Maybe several something else is for some of you, right? Maybe it's your garage. Maybe it's your house. Maybe you're a backseat driver. Maybe it's the remote control. Maybe you have to have, maybe, come on, y'all with me? Maybe it's, I keep going. I'll come down your lane in a minute. Oh, I can step on your toes if we keep talking about it. We know we can. On and on and on. What else might it be, right? But we all have those areas when someone walks into it, we're like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's my area. I control that. Don't mess with me. It's, right? And we do that. We travel, it bothers me. We're on the A-list of the, of the company we fly with. They say, you don't have to check in because we check it in three days ahead for you. But I find out if I'm not there on the spot 24, on hour 24, that I'm always later in the, and I tell her tonight on the way to church, they lie to me every time because I should have checked 20, 24 hours. I want to be controlled. <laughs> Come on. One of, the, <laughs> one of the most quoted and most popular yet challenging scriptures I'm going to give you right now Proverbs 3 verses 5 6 trust in the Lord with trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit everyone say submit I know it says acknowledge I know you're saying all your ways acknowledge no no the word acknowledge there means in all your ways Submit. It's the word submission, if you look in the Hebrew. It don't mean just, oh, I'm acknowledging God. He's in my life. I believe in God. God's great. All the time, he's great. No, 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 no. That's not what it means. It means submit to him, and he will make your path straight. Are you all with me? Do you, know the more, do you know the more we try to control, the more we fear losing control, and the more we fear losing control, the more we try to control? So it gets in this big fear circle, this big negative cycle where we think we can control them, we find out we can't, but we get more scared, so we try harder, and we end up anxious, we end up fearful, we end up with all kinds of negative emotions, and it's a cycle of fear. Listen, here's what you have to know. Duties are ours, but events are God's. I can't change the events of my life. I can't change what may happen tomorrow. I know my plans. All I know is I have to do whatever I face tomorrow, regardless of what the event looks like. I have to respond to whatever life hands me, to whatever comes. I can't change the event. I can't change if my flight's delayed. I can't change anything. I can only change the way I respond. I can only change my attitude. I can only check myself before I wreck myself. Is that correct? All right, so. Uh, hey, control freaks, we can't control everything. Look at your neighbor and say, we can't control everything. L let's look at control gone bad. Can we look at control gone bad? Abram and Sarai, we know them as Abraham and Sarah. <laughs> God said, I'm going to bless you. We just sang about it. I'm, I'm going to bless you. You're going to be the father of many nations. Now, he does not know how long it was going to take. He did not know it would be all the years it would be before it would come to pass that he would be 100, Sarah would be 99, and they'd be like, you know, making babies. So before that point, before that time, they decided to help God. And they made a pact where Sarah said to Abram, go out and get my, my, my servant Hagar and have a baby. Check this out. To this day in the Middle East, one of the biggest wars is still because of Ishmael. Because somebody decided not to submit to God's plan, but try to help them out because they were control freaks. Are y'all with me? Because I'm taking you somewhere, just stay with me. Now, here's two rules you need to remember. Number one, never sleep with another woman, even if your wife says it's okay. That's a good rule. Number two... Never forget rule number one. <laughs> come, come on, y'all with me? 
So it took too long, so they took control. Genesis 16, 1 through 4. Now Sarai, Ab Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. She had, uh, she, so she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go, sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abram agreed to, uh, to what Sarai said. So after Abram had been living in Canaan 10 years, Sarai, his wife, took the Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. And I'll tell you right now, follow further in you will see the cat fight that breaks out and the war that goes on today amen so take just a moment in your mind with me i'm going to be a little calmer tonight take take just a moment in your mind and i want you to think about the thing that you're trying to control put it in your mind right now what, what is it you're trying to control right maybe it's your kids not just the little ones maybe even your grown-up kids you're still trying to control maybe it's your spouse Maybe it's your spouse's schedule. Maybe it's the co-workers. Maybe it's your pastor. <laughs> maybe, it's the, maybe it's your image. Maybe it's the future. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe, can I just remind you, the only control you have in this world is none of those control. The only control the Holy Spirit gives you is self-control. You only have control over yourself, nothing else, and you can only respond the way you are on the inside. So you better learn to submit to God so when you respond, it comes out in a holy, godly, righteous way. Amen? Are y'all with me? Now, I, I want to say this because it's important. Because some of you don't want to do the exercise, I can tell. I'm not doing this stupid exercise. That's because some of you still have trouble submitting to authority or order. I, I don't use the word order, I, authority. I usually use the word order, which is the authority of God. He sets in order those things that he wants in place of authority. We know the Bible uses that word, but it talks about the order and the decency of God. I don't have time to go too deep into this, but the Bible is full of, of verses about us submitting to the order he's placed or the authority he's placed within our life. Everyone say submission. It sounds like a really cool thing, but it's so hard to do. We're disciples. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to submit. We're Christians. We're submitted to God. We bowed down to the altar. We gave our heart. That's not what it's talking about. It said, in all your ways, submit to him. Amen? Submission is not based on authority. It's based on order. And submission is not based on agreeing. It's based on honor. See, some think we, we, we submit and we have to agree when we submit. No, 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 no. I submitted many times through my life with an order that I didn't agree with necessarily. I wouldn't have done it that way necessarily. But in honor of the role they played, I stood back and I submitted to the order God had placed. I'm not saying it was wrong, it was sinful. If it's wrong or if it's sinful, please don't honor, please don't submit. I'm not saying that. But when it is, and it's just a different opinion, how many knows you've got to follow the plan, the order of God? Everyone say the plan. I would say the order. That's what God says. Look, look at Romans chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing love. You're, you don't have that. You don't have that. In showing honor. Everyone say showing honor. It says honor one another above yourselves. But this version, which is the, the English Standard Version, says outdo one another in showing honor. Everyone say outdo one another. Now, we know the Bible says I'm to honor her, she's to honor me. Could you imagine what our marriage is like when we try to outdo one another in honor? How we try to prefer one another? The Bible constantly talks about us preferring someone over ourselves, thinking better of someone else than we do ourselves, making sure that we're honoring one another that way. Could you imagine if we could get an entire church of 150, 200 people, and even beyond that, starting to outdo one another and submitting to God and honoring one another? Could you imagine what it'd be like to have a community of believers that said, no, 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 you're not going to out-honor me. I'm going to out-honor you. I'm not going to speak slanderous. I'm not going to speak evil. I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to be mean. I'm not going to be angry. I won't have harsh words because I'm going to outdo you in honor. You'll never outdo me in honor. Wow. I know. That's real Christian stuff right there. Because I remember when God told me even about serving, don't let yourself be outserved. I mentioned that a couple years ago right here in this church. I thought, well, that's cool. I'm not going to be out serving. My wife's not going to out serve me. My kids aren't going to out serve me. My church is not going to out serve me. My friends are not going to out serve me. It's hard. <laughs> it takes about a week, then you're like, why do I always have to be the nice guy? <laughs> you know, your flesh bucks up. You get in this attitude, and you're like, 
okay, I'm done with this, God. No, no, God said, no, I told you not to let. Now, now, I have to put myself back to submission of the Holy Spirit. It's the only way I can do it. To break down once again every morning and say, God, remind me of your word. Remind me of your promise. Remind me of your challenge. Remind me. Come on, everyone say, remind me. Remind. Choosing to submit requires trusting God rather than being controlling. Submission, everyone say submission, is about trusting God and letting go. It's about saying, God, I don't have the right to hold on to this because it shows I am not trusting you. Now, so tonight's title, Connection Through Submission, let's talk about that. Here are three questions that I'm going to give you that will help us connect through submission. Write them down. Number one, is it worth my time and effort? You know, in every situation you face, you should ask that question. Is it worth my time and effort? It has saved so many arguments between me and that beautiful woman right there when I thought to myself, is this worth my time and effort? Is it worth my peace of mind? Is it worth getting upset, slamming the door? Is it worth saying mean things? Is it worth my time and effort? Come on, y'all with me? Now, now check this out. We're going to see the results of what have we put our time and effort in. We, we might not want to wait, like Abram and Sarai, but if we've got 100 pounds to lose, it's going to take us a while. Can you say amen? <laughs> it's a slow, arduous, terrible life when you can't have a donut. <laughs> I'm not saying I know the key to happiness, but I can tell you I've never been sad with a taco in my hand. You know what I'm saying? Chips and sauce has never made me cry. There's never been a piece of pizza that made me unhappy. Y'all with me? <laughs> okay. So we have to say we're going to see the, re the rewards or the outcome or the results of whatever we put our time and effort into. It may take a while, but if you've got a marriage that's lacking love right now, start sowing seeds of love and don't wait, don't wait for a day or two and try to dig it up to see if it's growing. Keep on planting seeds and eventually you're going to reap this, the reward of love. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. My wife and I, we have children that we love, that we want them to love God, and they do, but one of them refuses to go to church. He's busy. He's got his life. I work sometimes. I'm tired. And my wife and I was, was challenged by somebody who said, you know what? Quit thinking the way you are. Change your thoughts about him. It'll change the way you speak about him. Now you'll be speaking words of life about him, and your efforts will not go unrewarded. So she, she challenged me. We challenged one another a month ago, and that sucker showed up to church two weeks ago. Now he's not been the last two weeks, but come on. One out of four is better than one out of the last 279 days. Come on, y'all with me. We must learn. Everyone say learn. We must learn to pick our battles. <laughs> Certain things we just have to let go of. You know, do they fold the towels correctly? Did the kids' outfits match when he sent them to school? Do they roll the toilet paper the wrong direction? Do they squeeze the toothpaste in the middle of the tube? You know how many people we've counseled over the dumbest stuff because they just won't let go and it's not about that really it's about submission and they don't want to submit you know here's the truth man you want your wife to submit and you think she's the I'm the husband she's the wife she's got to submit you got it wrong Ephesians 5 21 says submit to one another as unto the Lord I submit to her as well when I submit to her she keeps me out of a world of trouble many times because she sees different than me, right? She thinks different than me. She's my helpmate. Come on, y'all with me. We have issues with church members as well. Churches don't grow because of unhealthy attitudes. And it might not be toothpaste and toilet paper. It might be the style of song. It might be the, 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 it might be the level of the music. It, it might be what the pastor said. It might be the person at the door, it might, which is Lee right now. It shouldn't be him. It, it, might be, it might be a thousand things. But we think for a moment we can bicker, we can argue, we can have slanderous words, and the Bible just told us we can't, and the reason we can't is because we're not submitting to the Lord, therefore we're not outdoing one another in honor. 
I love the Rock Church. I, I love my church. I'm telling you, we've had fewer problems than most churches in America. And the moment I say that, I think, oh, Jesus, knock on wood. But, but, I'll say it again. We have fewer problems than most churches in, in America, really. We've had a couple. We have a big one going on right now. It's going to be okay. But here's what I do know. When you walk in all, any of our three campuses, you're going to feel the love of God because we love God and we love one another. Amen. That's, our, that's our mission, loving God, loving others, and serving the world. Can you say amen? amen? Do you find yourself picking too many battles with your spouse? Do you find yourself picking too many battles with your friendships? Do you find yourself picking too many battles with your christian church members do you find yourself picking too many battles with the pastor do you find yourself picking too many battles with I mean, you can put you can fill in the blank it doesn't matter because the truth is it's the attitude that's the problem i'm gonna say it's the attitude serving one another in church is our connection together serving together in church it's our connection I'm telling you right now, there's no one meant to be alone, and the church is meant for us to come and serve together. We can't serve together if our hands are around each other's throats. Busy hands. Can you say amen? amen? Cannot freely serve unless we freely submit. Write this down. Jesus had to submit in the garden before he could serve on the cross. If Jesus had to submit to serve, how much more do we have to submit to serve? If he had to say, Father, not my will, but your will be done, it's not about what I want. It's not about my preferences. It's not about what I think. It's what you sent me to do, and I'm going to check my attitude today at the garden so I can hang on the cross and represent you with the love of the Father that sent his only begotten Son. Come on, y'all with me. Serving someone is submitting. We never, we will never serve one another or prefer one another until we submit to God. Everyone say, submit to God. Submit to God. Number two, here's the second question you have to ask yourself. Is it within my control? Is it within my control? That's, that's a good question. If it is, do something about it. See, I have this thing for years that I've been majorly overweight. I used to be 236 pounds. I, I was as wide as I was tall. My head sat right on my shoulders. I had no neck. I can show you the picture. It's pretty gross. And I use this excuse. Well, some families get the fat gene. My family got the obese gene. I could smell a donut and gain 10 pounds. That was my favorite thing to say. And my wife said to me one day, why don't you just quit that? I said, quit what? You know, that, that excuse for not losing your weight. I was like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> and I thought to myself, she's right. She's right. She's absolutely correct. Come on, y'all with me. It's within my control. I can do something about it. But yet, in the background, I was taking control of all kinds of things I had no right taking control of. Is it within my control? Submission is not the same as, you know, uh, renouncing responsibility. We have to know that. Some things God don't do for you, and he won't do for you. You know that? See... There's so many churches that teach an irresponsible gospel. They teach that once you come to God, you're going to live this blessed life. You don't have to do anything. God's going to dress you, undress you, baby, you know, bottle, bottle feed you, baby burp you. No, 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 no. You got to put on the old and take, t take off the old and put on the new. Can you say amen? Yeah. It's true. It's true. Is it with my control? Financial dilemmas are mostly self-inflicted. Love you, but it's true. Right? Health issues are due usually to a lack of diet or inactivity. Not always. I'm not saying always. Don't, don't judge me yet. Bad marriage is caused by bad attitude. No, you don't understand my wife. No, I understand who she's married to, though. <laughs> right? Write this down. We can't control the wind, but we can set the sail. It may be windy in your life right now. Maybe you, maybe you, maybe in the middle of a storm. You can change the course by setting the sail the way it needs to be set. You can choose today whether or not it's in your control. And if it is, do something about it. If not, trust God, submit to God. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, you can do it. I can do it. We can do it together. It's a fact. We see people do it all the time. Um, we're not alone. Did you know that? Do you know people care? For those of you that's here right now, and you've been thinking no one cares. We care. People care. People around you care. The reason you think people don't care is because you got lost in your own thoughts about how people think of you, and most people aren't even thinking of you. 
You're spiritually narcissistic. You think everyone's down on you, and we haven't even thought of you. If you just tell us you have a need, we'd love on you. See how simple that is? But we get our, we get our thinking all messed up trying to control things we can't control is it within our control if it's not submit to god resist the devil he will flee from you can you say amen that's why at our church ministry happens in small groups we say it like this at the rock more ministry will happen in circles than rows in other words meeting together loving together submitting to god together serving one another because of that submission seeing people that are hurting and meeting those needs because together we're doing more for each other and outdoing one another in honor can you say amen is it within your control if it's not you don't have the right to try to control it you need to let it go submit it to god change your attitude and come back to a posture of serving amen everyone say you have the right to serve <laughs> Number three, write this one down. Is it the only solution? Is the only solution found in God? Is the only solution found in God? Here's the deal. There are times we know there's no other solution except God Almighty. We need a miracle. We pray, we cry, we speak in tongues, we speak the word, we do what we can. But the truth is, sometimes nothing works, and the only solution you have is found in God. And sometimes He don't answer the way we want. When my son died, when he was killed, I prayed all night long. I had three broken ribs, I had a broken collarbone, my chest was beaten, it was bleeding under the skin, I had a cut face, I would not take any pain medicine because I was going to be clear-minded, speaking the word, praying the spirit, doing the thing, and he died. My 18-year-old, who was, who was living like a hellion, was on a bad drug deal in a gang, went through a windshield, we prayed the same way he lived. I don't understand how a nine-year-old innocent boy dies and 18 year old hellion lives i don't understand unless the fact that jesus said, i better save this one so he has a chance everyone says found in god sometimes your solution is only found in god and you are wearing yourself out you're worrying yourself sick you're doing everything you can and you're still trying and god says this is not about you now this is about me submit to me and let me work out the details I found out a long time ago, I do all I can do, and what I can't do, I go to sleep, and I let God take the night shift, because I need my sleep. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's true, she'll tell you. I, I, we had a situation where, and I mentioned that night, a guy split our church, and we were in a bad way financially. The church was bankrupt, we were almost bankrupt. It was a bad situation. I had to borrow $15,000 from my father-in-law just to pay our staff and pay some bills. And my, staff, my, my, my financial guy called me and said, I don't, we're in bad shape. I don't know what we're going to do this next week. I don't know what we're going to do. It would be like 9 o'clock at night. And I said, I don't know what we're going to do either, but I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. I'm going to bed. Quit calling me. He would call me the next morning. I don't think you understood. I don't think, yeah, I think I did understand. You told me we don't have enough money for what we need to do. I didn't start this. It's not my will. It's his will. If it's his will, it's his bill. I'm going to bank on that. He finally, he finally taught our men's group one day once we was out of the woods, and he said, I'm going to be honest, I was so mad at Pastor because I thought he'd lost his mind again. <laughs> yeah, that's a long story. The again part, that's a long story. I don't have, I don't have time for the again part of that statement. That's, that's not for tonight. Y'all with me? Sometimes it's just not in our control, and we have to admit that. If it's not within our control, we definitely need God. If it's not within our control, you know what? We need others as well. You know what the Bible says about a person that isolates himself? The Bible said any man that isolates himself seeks his own desire and rages against wisdom. Any man that isolates himself seeks his own desire. When you isolate yourself, well, I just don't want to bother you. No, 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 no. You're just wanting to lick your own wounds, and you want to have a pity party. There's only one invited. You invited yourself. You're the only one that showed up, and you're the only one crying. <laughs> Come on, y'all with me? And the truth is, you're supposed to do the opposite. When you've done all you can to stand, you stand spiritually, but, but you ain't supposed to stand by yourself. No man is an island. You should reach out not only to God, you should reach out to the church. That's what the church is all about. Come on, look at someone and say, I need you. Oh, don't look at your family member, your spouse. Look at someone else you don't know and say, I need you too. <laughs> we will drive ourselves crazy trying to control things beyond our control. I drove myself crazy trying to control the, the scope of our marriage. 
Back when I was a young man, I was so jealous. She was so jealous. We drove each other crazy trying to control one another till we went through a miserable divorce. Yes, and I lost my mind. But God restores. I want to say God restores. He restored our marriage. He restored most of my mind. He, 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 he restored ministry. God is a restorer. Can you say amen? And, and, and it's because we decided to submit not only to him but to one another. We need one another. Our connection is, comes through submission. We submit to God, therefore, we have the attitude where we can submit in church and we have a spirit of unity, which the pastor just talked about. Again, he got on my sermon before I got up here, that there's a spirit of unity the enemy can't come against, the, the, the world can't ignore. It's so attractive they come to Jesus because that's how they know we're his disciples in that we have love for one another. Come on, amen? We can have faith or we can have control. But we can't have both. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we try to control something outside of our control is when anxiety comes. Give it to God. The outcome is peace. Can we change our children's attitude? No, but God can. Can we change our spouse? No, but God can. Can we heal our loved ones? No, but God can. Can we provide during a bad economy? No, but God can. So every time there's something I can't control, I have to remember it is God who is in control. I'm going to stand in his promises. I'm going to stand in faith. I'm going to believe what he said. And he has come through every time. Come on, everyone say every time. Every time? Every time? Mm -hmm. Write this down. This is important. If we have time to worry, we certainly have time to pray. If we have time to worry, we certainly have time to pray. Come on, look at someone and say, you have time to pray. I'm trying to tell someone here tonight that if you're attempting to control something, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, what does it say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your, all your ways. Submit. Everyone say submit. Everyone say submit. submit. Yeah, it says trust, acknowledge. It says a lot of things. It means to submit to God. And he will make your path straight. You got this. You got this. <laughs> Do what you can, but submit the rest to Jesus. Trust the Holy Spirit. He is your friend. Can you say amen? amen. A church will never have growth or significant influence until its members learn to submit to God and prefer one another and honor one another. Do you know that when we were going through our darkest time, everything was falling apart, and I was falling apart. I was mad at the guy that split our church. I was really breathing fire. I was saying stuff. I was tearing him down. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, I had this conversation. I said, this isn't fair. I'm a loyal friend. I've never done this to another pastor. I serve faithfully. I've never started a church under someone else's church. I've never split a church. This is not me, and this isn't right. And God said, you're right. This is not your seed. This is his seed but the way you respond will be your seed. My wife would tell you, I came to her right away and said, no more talking about it. I went to the staff, no more talking about it. You tell those under you, no more talking about it. And the moment we shut our mouths and we start honoring one another with our, come on, with our hearts, you know what happened? Church grew. All of a sudden growth took place. I would have never dreamed I could pastor the church I pastor now. Not because of anything I did, but because of what God did through people submitted to him, honoring one another. Ever say honor. honor. Ever say unity. unity. That's what makes the church grow. That's what gives influence in communities. That's what people say about this church out there. They're people that love. They're people submitted to God. They're people that honor one another. That will win this community to Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. God will never allow his babies, his children, to be born in an unhealthy atmosphere. That's why the average church in America today is still 85. Think of all the churches, 400,000 churches in America. And the average church is still 85 because the average church still have people who are jacked up. Look at someone say, don't be jacked up. <laughs> don't, don't be jacked up. There may be times I have to tell you you got something green on your tooth. You got some mayonnaise on your face. Hey, bro, you got a little passenger. Wipe it off. You know what I'm saying? Just get, get rid of that. Just, just get rid of that. 
<laughs> you know, there's a way you can do that, right? I, I've done that with people. I'm like, hey, bro, you got a little something. Right? You got a little crumb on your stuff. I'm telling you, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I did it like that, I'm embarrassing him. I'm not doing it out of love. I'm not doing it out of honor. So you might say, the Bible says speak the truth in love. Yes, love is the big part of that sentence. So when you disagree with a member of the body, you disagree with the leadership of the church, you disagree with anyone, you don't have the right to bring public scrutiny to them because you're just taking attention from yourself. I've always said the critical people, I've always said, don't clap yet because I, I want you to hear this. I, <laughs> I've always said critical people are critical because they want to point fingers at someone else so there's not a light on their own self. Every time I see somebody pointing someone else's sin out, I look back to that person and wonder, I wonder what sins in their life that they're trying to avoid that they don't want us looking at. Come on, y'all with me. That's not honoring. That's not God. That's not submission. And we cannot be connected unless we're submitted to God and be submitted to one another. Submission through and connection through submission. Can you say amen? amen? God help us become connected through submission for the outcome of unity and be a great witness to the world around us. God help us be that church that's a light of God's love with unity, with, with honoring one another so that when people walk in those doors that are hurting, they don't see this church just like they see the world. If you're not a light at your job and you just entertain the same conversation at the drinking fountain, if you just gather in and you act like the world, what good do we do? We are light in darkness. We are salt in this earth. We're supposed to preserve the world and we can't do it unless we first submit to God and then we come to church and we we submit to one another, preferring one another, outdoing one another in honor. Come on, y'all with me? So I implore you tonight as I go, first of all, don't be mad at me. I love y'all too much. And you all know I'm going to have something every year I come that's going to have some type of order to it. That's just what God does. But it's true that this church, and I've watched it for 21 years, be a light around and I've watched as we've gone through trouble throughout the years. I'm telling you right now, that can stop. The future can be brighter than ever. And next year, this church could triple in size if you'll just do the things Pastor Andy's talked about and you do the things that we're talking about in the Word. This church will be a light that's so bright, a beacon on a hill that cannot be hidden. It's your responsibility. It's your honoring. It's your submission that will get it done. Come on, y'all with me? It's true. Make your, just run up here like you stole something. <laughs> I don't care. Just do whatever you do. But will you just stand to your feet? Come on, just stand to your feet. <laughs> what time is my plane? You don't remember? Ten, ten something. Ten forty-five. I'm good. Okay. So here, here's the deal. This is the only sermon this week I knew I was going to preach. And it's my least favorite. No one coming up here. The other two, I didn't plan. The other two, they were totally God. This one, this was on me. Yet the Holy Spirit, because I knew this had to be said. Now, now listen to me carefully. <laughs> Some of you, you call me Uncle Kevin. I love that. I feel like you're too old to call me Uncle Kevin. That's right. Um, <laughs> at least you're not calling me Grandpa. But y'all know I love you. You know I love this church. I pray for this church throughout the year. I don't just I don't just say that when I come here. I follow it online. I watch y'all. Who the, whoever does your social media knows I'm clicking. I'm I'm watching you. I'm there because you're my family. And I don't know what's going to happen altogether, but I know what God wants. And I know that this man standing right here is a good man. He's a good man. I'm telling you right now, if I live in Sodom and I come to church right here, the only two weeks I live here, I come here. There's the proof right there. And you can either be a rock in his boat or you can be the wind in his sails. You can be upset and you can cause a stink or you can be loving, kind, honoring, Submitted to God, 
submitted to him, submitted to one another, and turned so done upside down for Jesus Christ. Now, let me ask you a question. Y'all can answer all at once if you want. Do you think God wants option one, you being obstinate, or option number two, being honoring? Okay, so it's not a trick question, you passed. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna submit ourselves. Can we do that? Can we just submit ourselves? Before we do that, every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here and you've never submitted to God. Maybe you're here and you've never came to a place where you call Jesus Lord. Oh, yeah, you've believed, you've, you, you've, you've been around church, your parents took you to church, but you've never really had the initial sin. You've never really came to a place where you said to yourself, I'm gonna sit my life, submit my life completely to Jesus Christ. Well, here's what the Bible says in the book of Romans. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe your heart in God is raised in front of the dead, you shall be saved. I, I'm not talking to you that needs to renew your life right now, that maybe, you, maybe you've never submitted. You've broken your relationship with God altogether and it's time to submit to him. You're causing yourself heartache. You're causing yourself, you're causing yourself heaviness. You're call, causing yourself hell. That's not from God. If you're here right now, and you know you need to submit yourself to God one time, one last time, Jesus Christ, maybe for the first time as Lord. Come on, will you just slip your hand up and write back down? Slip it up, write back down. Good, God bless you. There's one, someone else. Someone else, slip it up, write back down. I'm gonna pray for you right where you're at. I'm not gonna embarrass you. I'm not going to call you for God bless you. God bless you. There's three. You can put them right back down. Is there anyone else? You'll say, Pastor Kevin, that's me. I need to submit. God bless you. There's four. You can put them right back down. Good. Good. This is the Holy Spirit talking to you. You know that, right? This is that part of God that deals with all of us. He's around you and he wants to live in you. But you must receive Jesus as Lord. Anyone else want to join these four and say, Pastor Kevin, it's time tonight I submit to God as Lord of my life. Okay, I'm going to pray this prayer. Those of you who lifted your hand, I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer. Those of you that are born again, I'm going to ask you to say it with them, to support them. Come on, let's all do it together. Say this prayer. Father, Father. come on, everyone together. Father, Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe he's your son. I believe he died on the cross. He was buried, rose again. Jesus, I confess you now as my Lord my Savior, forgive me for my sin, make me new. From this day forward, I place my life completely in your hands, and I place myself in a local church to learn more of you, that through greater knowledge of who you are, I will grow in deeper love with you, in Jesus' name. Come on, welcome to the family of God. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church, celebrate. Come on, church. I love those celebrations. Love them. Uh, last year, we had 1,024 people born again in our church, baptizing people left and right. So, so our, our, our team was so wet, they were, they were sag, we're, you know, our skin was sag. But we rejoiced like that every time. Let, let me just say this to every one of you that just lifted your hand. Today could be the, the difference for the rest of your life, but you must submit. Submit. There's not an option to go to church. You go to church. There's not an option to pray. You pray. There's not an option to walk it out with someone else. You walk with someone else. They will walk with you. You say amen. amen. Now, one last thing. I'm going to go. You need to submit to God. There's some of you here. You've submitted to your own mind, your own thoughts. You've had your own arguments. You've had your own disappointments. You have your own rough patches, whether it's your marriage, whether it's financially, whether it's your health, whether it's with the church. <laughs> you can do what you want, but I would beg you not to argue against God. I, I would beg you not to wrestle against the Lord, okay? But submit. Everyone say submit. Anyone, anyone ever watch UFC? I don't want to get that kind of submission. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't want my hip knocked out of the point where I have to tap out. I'm not tapping out. Come on, this type of submission I'm talking about, you're tapping in. Come on, everyone, I'm ready to tap in. Okay, come on, come on. So once again, heads bowed just for a moment because this is a moment of honesty. If you're here right now and you say, Pastor Kevin, I've been stubborn. Pastor Kevin, I've been holding out. Pastor Kevin, I I've not been doing what I need to do. I've not submitted. I've not submitted to the body. I've not submitted to the leadership. I've not submitted to the pastor. This is the moment. This is the time. This is the change. I'm ready to tap in. Lift your hand up right now. Come on. Say brave. Good, 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 good. Lift, keep them up. No, you don't put these down. Keep them up. This is that strong admission. Good, 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 good. Keep them up. Keep them up. Good. Now just lift your other hand with it. And everyone here, just lift your hands before God. Father, we submit to you right now in the name of Jesus. We submit to your will and your way. God, right now we come before you and say, here I am, Lord, as a drink offering poured out. I submit, God, when the church doors open, I'm going to be there. When the church has a need, I'm going to do what I can to meet it, God. When, when, Pastor, when Pastor Terry's preaching, I'm going to say amen. I'm going to support. I'm going to be that person, God. I'm going to be what the disciples were to you. I'm going to carry the mission. I'm going to carry the vision. I'm going to submit right now to what you have set up, God. You've set this up. We know good and well, God, it's been you that's ordained it. So we just call upon you right now, God, to help our hearts submit. Help us to be the people we're supposed to be that reaches the world out there that's lost and dying without Jesus. Help us to be the light and the salt, God, in this earth. God, I pray right now, Lord. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Everyone say amen. And I just say this to you. This is an awkward moment for your pastor. No pastor likes to take a pulpit after a message like this. Because they think, somebody's out there thinking, oh, he had Pastor Kevin say those things. No, he did not. And if you do wrestle against somebody like that, you're in some big trouble. So I love you. I love y'all. It's my regular Friday night. I'm out. All right. Do you appreciate that man right there and that lady right there? Yes. Amen. We want to speak blessings over them, blessings over their ministry, blessings over their church. Safe travels headed back. I almost can't wait to see them again next year. Amen? Amen. All right. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Are you ready to submit? Do you love the Lord? Yes. Are you ready to submit? Yes. There we go. God bless you. God be with you. We'll see you again Sunday morning. Be blessed, church. Amen.